I wanted to share a story from my childhood with y'all. I've changed all the names for privacy reasons. I'm the youngest in my family, and I've just turned 17. All my siblings are married, and really older than me. So all my childhood, I've spent alone in my aunt Sarah and Uncle Jared's house. Uncle Jared is my dad's older brother. My parents both work, and weren't home most of the time. I've always gotten a really heavy feeling when I was in their house and experienced really questionable things. One of the things I vividly remember is seeing a silhouette of a tall man in a coat and hat. He was standing at the end of their hall, just facing in my direction. It was kind of like a shadow, but he didn't move at all. Whenever I slept over there, I have my own room at their house. I would hear furniture moving upstairs and all the bedrooms are downstairs on the first floor. The kitchen is on the ground floor. The second floor only has a big lounge type area for parties and it's always locked. So I know for a fact that no one goes there in the middle of the night or any other time. Once my aunt Sarah and uncle Jared had gone to visit their son who lives in another country. At that time, my older sister Amy, who is 31 and Jess, who's 28, were having their finals for college and high school. Amy is 14 years older than me and Jess is 10 years older than me. So when they had their finals, I'll be playing around or disturbing them. So to study, they had stayed at my aunt's house for the time being. After staying over there for a few days, suddenly they came back. When I questioned them, they told me the other day Amy was in the kitchen baking. She has a weird habit of baking when she's stressed. When she felt someone walk behind her for a while, she thought it was Jess. But when she felt someone put their chin on her shoulder, she turned to look and saw no one in the kitchen. She had freaked out, and when she questioned Jess, Jess told her that she hadn't left the room, which freaked them both, and the next day they rushed back. We don't tell our parents about all this stuff, because they don't believe in all this. Another thing I remember is that whenever I was going back to my house, I always had this feeling that I was getting chased, and I would run really fast all the way to my home. My aunt's home was never locked, since we live in a gated community, and we are really familiar with the neighbours. One time, I remember I went over to her house, and it was empty. At that time, Aunt Sarah frequently visited her dad in the hospital. And clearly remember, I was standing in the entrance of her room, and something ran really fast behind me. At first, I thought I'd imagined it. But when I turned to leave, I saw the carpet in the end of the hall was a bit turned over from the corner like someone stumbled on it. I had run from there so fast that time. I have noticed that whenever Aunt Sarah wasn't home, I couldn't stay at her house. Something always happened. Two years ago, Aunt Sarah passed away. The hospital couldn't diagnose what illness she had. One thing you should know about me is I'm, an extreme, I'm extremely good at pretending I'm asleep. So when my mom talked to her sister, I would listen. Not really proud of it, but I'm really curious about almost everything. One time I heard her talk of how Aunt Sarah had told my mom how she, Aunt Sarah, had found something really disturbing hidden above an event in one of the rooms. She said it looked like an animal's gut or something, and Aunt Sarah once had mentioned to me that her brother had found a weird picture that looked like it was drawn with their family living in horrible conditions. One time I heard my mom say that before Aunt Sarah died, she had told my mom that someone had done this, her illness to her. I was horrified. After she passed away, I just couldn't go in her house. I literally feel like someone is suffocating me. And that heavy feeling in my chest from before is always still there. Whatever is in her house is extremely powerful now that she's gone. It terrifies me. But occasionally I have to go over there and I just have this weird feeling that makes me look over my shoulders every other minute. Please tell me what I should do and what type of entity is so powerful to do stuff like that. P.S. My uncle Jared had moved to another country where his son lives after Aunt Sarah's death. So the house is always empty, but occasionally we go over to hers to make sure everything is in its place and nothing needs fixing. Update. I talked with my parents and they were really dismissive of the situation and said that I was being paranoid. So I showed them this thread in the comments where a few people said they had similar incidents. After reading it, they told me to leave it alone and stop thinking about it. I was getting frustrated, so I took it upon myself and called my uncle. 
We had a lengthy talk and he told me what I knew was only the tip of the iceberg and there's been a lot going on in that house since they moved in. Here are a few of the things he mentioned in our talk. Apparently I wasn't the only one who saw the shadow figure of a man. My aunt saw it too, but in another part of the house, my cousin's bedroom, which was always locked, even when my aunt and uncle lived there. When my sister stayed at my uncle's house, he said he actually told them to leave before sundown and not sleep there. He said that there's been a lot of activity, but he won't tell me because he doesn't want to scare me. I absolutely love reading other people's experiences on this page, so I thought I would share one of my own. I regularly visit abandoned buildings, so I have quite a few experiences, but this was my first notable one. I was at a farmhouse that had been abandoned since the late 60s, although it appeared more like a time capsule from the 1920s with the things left inside. This farmhouse was quite literally in the middle of nowhere, nothing but hills and fields as far as you can see. The inside of the house was fully boarded, and so it was pitch black inside. On entering the house, there was an instant feeling of being watched, but maybe that was just because it was so dark, it instantly had that creepy vibe. I had forgotten to grab my torch from the car due to the excitement of finding the house, and so me and my boyfriend were using our phone torches to look around. Once we had scoped the whole building, we decided to start taking some pictures. We were in one of the upstairs bedrooms at this time. As soon as I mentioned taking a picture, we both heard a noise directly behind us as if a chair had been scraped across the floor. We both looked at each other thinking the other person had accidentally kicked something, but of course neither of us had. There was a stool in the room at that time, which I then scraped across the floor out of curiosity, and the noise was pretty much the same. Either way, I dismissed this. Old houses do make noises albeit nothing quite like something scraping across the floor. We continued to go ahead to take some pictures. The first picture my boyfriend went to take was a photograph, likely of the previous owners. The photo was an old black and white one, you know the ones where they never smiled. Naturally, just to add to the creepy allure. As he went to take the photo, his phone literally shut off. He had never had trouble with his phone prior, to this, but it literally shut down at the exact moment he went to take a picture. At this moment, I started to panic a little bit, and with my phone now being the only source of light, I thought it best that we leave whilst he tries to fix his phone. As we were stood outside, I felt very unwelcome. I was also panicking as my boyfriend's phone was now not responding to anything, and we didn't have much money at the time, so there's no way we could have afforded a new phone. It was at this point that I decided to talk to any potential spirits that may be around. I explained the circumstance of us not being able to afford a new phone, which is hilarious now that I think about it, and apologised that they felt I invaded their privacy. I then asked if they could fix the phone. After at least 10 minutes of trying to fix the phone, as soon as I asked them to fix it, the phone immediately came back on. After this, we did decide to go back inside. This time around, being inside felt completely different. I felt almost welcomed, but only to explore downstairs. When I looked upstairs, I felt sure there was someone looking down at me, almost as if they were being sure I would not return upstairs. This could all be a series of very freaky coincidences, or maybe there were previous owners still there who were very protective of their home. The place has become more popular in recent years, and many of the personal items of value in the home have been stolen so it would explain why they wouldn't welcome visitors. When I was 13, my family moved into a new home in a nice neighbourhood and took us in Arizona. It was a relatively new build, 2002, and was part of a very nice subdivision. I lived in the house from age 13 to roughly 19. There was a year in the college dorms in the middle. No one had died in the house that I could find, and overall it didn't have any of those haunted house red flags. Also, for context, although I am not very religious, I grew up in an extremely Christian or religious family. The entire time I lived in the house, I had horrible nightmares, 
to the point where I was scared to go to sleep. My parents would sort of play it off like it was nothing. My parents were on one side of the house and had their own bathroom. On my side of the house, it was just me and no one used my bathroom. At night, I would hear the sink was on and the toilet flushing. No one was ever in the bathroom when I looked. I tried to play it off like it was nothing. I would also hear scratching in the attic relatively frequently. My childhood house had a stray cat that lived in our attic, so I quickly explained that away as likely some sort of animal, even though this was a newer house with a sealed attic and we never found an animal. I thought all of this was just happening to me. Eventually, my mum and dad started talking about footsteps they heard at night. My mum said they would walk around the house, but she didn't feel any negative energy, so she thought maybe it was an angel or just see loved one protecting us. Insert eye roll at the angel comment here. My dad said the footsteps happened every night. I stayed awake one night and sure as shit, it sounded like someone shuffling through the house. All of this seemed like pretty harmless activity until one night in my late teens. I woke up to find my bedroom door closed. I had a mirror on the back of my bedroom door and I was always afraid of seeing something in the mirror. So I kept the door open and the hall light on. Everyone in the house knew about my obsession with keeping the door open later when I asked about it. No one in my family said they shut the door. Upon seeing the door shut, I immediately panicked. I got out of bed heart pounding and tried not to look at the mirror. I opened the door, took a deep, deep breath and walked back to my bed. I remember thinking something like, this is the part of the horror movie where I get attacked. And then I laid down in my bed. This next part, I am not kidding. I know people will call bullshit and say it didn't happen, but I know without a shadow of a doubt this happened to me and I can't explain it to save my life. The second I laid down in bed, it was like the covers were pulled up over my face and someone was holding them down over my head. It felt like hands were all over my body pinning me down. I felt like I was burning all over and I could hear the sound of like firewood burning in my ears. I could also hear laughing. I couldn't move and I felt like I was going to die. Regardless of your views on religion, all I could think to do was pray. I don't know if I prayed out loud or really loud in my head. I said something like, in the name of Jesus, stop, three times. I remember very specifically on the third time, everything evaporated. My house was quiet and I ran. I bolted into my parents' room, covered in sweat and sobbing. My dad said it was just a nightmare. I got angry and yelled at him for not listening to me. I wouldn't go back into my room. My mom took it a little more seriously. The next day, she had the house anointed and prayed over and everything stopped. The footsteps, the nightmares, the toilet flushing, everything. We eventually moved out of the house and nothing like that ever happened again. But it seems that everywhere I go since then, weird shit still happens to me periodically, but not at that scale. Like I said, I'm not super religious anymore, but this is one of those things I can't really explain. I know it happened. My family knows it happened. I can't offer any logical explanation for what happened. My time in Sri Lanka, I lived there for about a year because of my dad's work. He was working at the oil refineries there. Now some of my most vivid and awesome memories. Rode on an elephant, stayed at an awesome hotel. It was pretty awesome all around. I was living there during a war in the early 2000s, so there were a lot of armed guards, etc. Obviously, I didn't understand these things, though. That's a bit of a theme. Anyways, my mom and sister had gone to go shopping, and I was left with a nanny. Her name was Auntie Ira. I absolutely loved her. She always kept a close eye on me as a three-year-old can get up to some serious mischief. However, she had gone into the other room for a few minutes, probably to cook some food, and had placed me in a cot. During this time, I do not remember the entity entering. I only remember its presence suddenly being known to me. The entity was all black, not like skin color, I think like a shadow, and I had no features. It spoke to me, but I distinctly remember not hearing any accents or any real voice. I simply felt its intent bouncing around in my head such that it felt like it was speaking aloud, not dissimilar to when you self-dialogue in your own head. 
Though this voice was not my own, and I hadn't even really developed a self-dialogue in my mind yet, as I was so young. I don't remember how, but what I remember is somehow being outside of my cottage, and the entity pushing a chair to the window and opening it, telling me to stand on the chair. The voice was so alluring. It drove me into a sort of trance. My young mind was completely defenceless, and simply obliged to the mysterious, though charming figure. It then whispered for me to jump. I distinctly remember the view from my window to the ground below. Certain death if I fell, but the entity seemed to take away all concerns of self-preservation. I was going to do it, though I don't know how long I stood there for. However, my mother came into the room and saw me about to go out the window and screamed. Her scream brought me back to some form of lucidity, and she was understandably distraught. We had a long dis discussion about what had happened. She was a spiritual woman and seemed to believe what I had said, though at the time I did not understand the concept of reality beyond the physical, and only realised what happened when she told me about the story later in life, reminding me of the memories. Throughout the duration of our stay, I remember said entity outside that same window, not as charming anymore, but staring like a predator watching prey, which made me become scared of him. I believe that this entity has never truly left though, as I saw it again in a mirror in a hotel in Bellina, and I believe it has taken many forms, all with the intent to end my life. Another example is when I was yet again in Bellina, Australia. I saw two people playing on the beach and for an inexplicable reason felt compelled to follow, so I did, until suddenly they were gone, just vanished, and I was a fair ways out at sea. Yet again, it was the screams of my mother that brought me back to my lucidity, and I managed to swim back to shore. Luckily, I had those floaty things that you put on your arms as a kid. But without those, I may have been in some serious trouble. I was about seven at the time. I have also had issues with what my family believed to have been demonic possession. It's not as dramatic as pop culture likes to believe, but just as disturbing. Notes. Many will say that possession is an excuse for being an inexcusable excusably awful person. I agree most of the time and refrain from such poor attempts at rationalising bad behaviour. However, these are my true experiences. I know how I felt and I know how I got over it, so I implore you to see things as I did. During this time, your mind gradually becomes consumed by violent and completely psychopathic inclinations. Hatred and fear also engulf your psyche, whilst you always feel as if you're being watched. When you close your eyes, you see horrific things, and sleeping is always a terrifying task. This has happened multiple times in my life, but the worst case was when I was in second grade. I essentially became a completely different person. I got in trouble for talking about murdering my peers, drew awful pictures about torture during art classes, and I found bullied and harassed other kids, a typically creepy kid that became an edgelord a little too early. Well, it reached a climax when I led the kids in my year level to harass another kid on baseless rumours, after which they all pointed the finger at me and I was dealt swift justice. I got exactly what I deserved. I was openly humiliated in front of my peers, screamed at my parents and teachers alike and became an outcast until high school. However, such punishments, however deserved, only heightened the growing evil inside me. My parents saw this clearly and so it took me to paediatricians, psychologists, the works. I was diagnosed with ADHD, anxiety and Tourette syndrome and was told to medicate. We initially declined, though we would take them up on this a year later. Lastly, we saw many spiritual leaders and healers, though none could help. Finally, we attempted a sort of exorcism, in private. No convulsions on the ground or anything so dramatic, simply very firm prayer. This was when I felt the thing left me, and as a result, I took a turn for the better, though healing was gradual and took many years. I am now a Christian, and have given my soul to the Lord, realising that it was likely divine protection that guarded me from this entity, from outright killing me, and it was divine intervention that I had freed from its grasp. I am an adult now, and like to believe that I have atoned for my past sins, and have truly overcome this entity, becoming a better person. However, I post this because the same entity has re revealed itself again, though I suspect it, its influence recently has a, as a string of malevolent coincidences have plagued me. Indeed, I felt it appear yet again, 
It was like it was always there and only decided to make me aware of it. This has followed a sequence of highly spiritual dreams of intense sin, hell, and the road I was going down in second grade, though fast forwarded into adulthood. Warnings from God I believe of the entity's trickery. I'm sure it attends to assault me again. It must have had a reason for trying to kill me when I was too young to think, and trying to corrupt me when I was too young to properly self-reflect. Now it seems to have gotten much bolder. I do fear it as a human. I cannot stand against such an ancient being, but through faith, my fear is swept away. So, back in 2014 and 15, I don't exactly remember. I was around 8 or 9. Me and my family, my aunts, grandma and grandpa, my mom and some of my aunt's friends, went to this beach which is quite famous in the country I live. It was supposed to be a three days and two nights trip. Everything was fine, but I don't know why I didn't like the hotel we booked at all. It wasn't because of appearance or the hospitality, rather it was because of the creepy feeling I got in there. And it was truly creepy that even after so long, I clearly remember what happened and what I felt. I did tell my mother that I didn't like the hotel, but she probably just thought it was a child's tantrum or something. I don't remember exactly what we spoke about. So for two complete days, I suppressed the feeling of someone staring at me. Like the feeling someone gets when a person is staring at you with too much intensity. I shook it off, but something happened on the last day of our stay there. And it still creeped me out in different levels. It was night. Our luggage was packed. I was a kid, so I was sharing a room with my mother. We were sleeping, but suddenly the lights went off. My body temperature from birth is very high, so naturally I feel like really hot, even when the AC is on sometimes. I remember waking up while panting. I've woken up because of feeling hot before, but it was nothing like the one I felt that day. It was a suffocating heat, like something or someone was pressing down on my chest. I felt so damn hot, but I was unable to wake up. I could feel my back being drenched in sweat, but still, I was unable to open my eyes. Finally, after a while, I don't remember how long, I managed to open my eyes, and what I saw still haunts me to this date. My feet faced the balcony, and there was a window a bit further away from the door, which led to said balcony. The curtains that were actually drawn to prevent the streetlights from entering were pulled open. The window that was closed was open and there was a person standing right outside. I couldn't see that person in the darkness, but I still remember those eyes that I couldn't see, but I did feel them staring back at me. They weren't very kind, rather I would say I could freaking feel the malicious intent steeping out of them. I remember trying to scream out loud, but I couldn't. It was like the same feeling, the feeling of something weighing down on me. I was so scared that I probably trembled in fear. I don't know for how long it happened, but at some point, I remember shutting my eyes closed. And that's all I remember from that night. The next morning when I woke up, my mother saw that I was visibly scared and I almost hysterically asked her if there was a lights out yesterday. And she said there was nothing like that. If it was to be like then, we should have known. I told her everything, but she didn't believe me. <clears throat> Every single person I told didn't believe me. Rather, they took it as some sort of nightmare. But honestly speaking, though I was young, I can assure you people it wasn't a nightmare. A nightmare can't be that realistic. No one till this day believes me, and I too at some point stopped speaking about it. But I never actually forgot about it, and I don't think I ever will. Maybe to other people this doesn't seem very scary, but I still get nightmares about that night. And I truly hope that I could forget that cursed night, but I just can't. It is literally living in my head rent-free. It doesn't matter how much I want to kick it out. It just doesn't go away. My girlfriend and I wake up at the same time and call each other over Snapchat's video call service every morning. We both take virtual classes, so it's a fun way to start our mornings. This morning, shortly after we had both woken up, she fell back asleep. I placed my phone on my desk this morning and then left to make some coffee and breakfast. When I returned, she had hung up on the call and had sent multiple messages with sad faces on my name. I noticed that she had tried to call me multiple times with the video feature turned off. I called her back with my video on. 
She was crying and asked me what I was doing. I explained to her that I went to go make breakfast. She asked me if I'd come back at any time, to which I told her I hadn't. When I told her this, she began crying harder. I was very confused. I did my best to console her while she was still trying to understand what was making her upset. She made me promise her multiple times that I hadn't come into the room while I was making breakfast. I told her I hadn't. She began explaining to me that she saw me standing in the room. She saw me facing the phone a few feet away from it, staring into the camera. She was confused for a few seconds, but she told me that she knew something was wrong after a while. She told me that my eyes were unnaturally wide and unblinking. She thought the camera had frozen, but she said she could be my, see my body moving slightly and my arms swaying. She was deeply disturbed and hung up after 30 seconds. I was very taken aback by this. I've had absolutely no paranormal experiences in this house. I've lived here for more than six years. The only thing I can think of that may have incited some type of paranormal activity would be something that happened on my property decades ago. My property used to have an attached barn. One of the previous owners hung himself in that barn. Like I said, I've never experienced anything paranormal in this house. I've considered the possibility that maybe she's just had a nightmare. Well, she seems confident that she was awake. I'm really not sure what to make of this. I don't feel uncomfortable sitting in the room she saw the dark copy of me. It feels just how it did before. If anybody could help shine some light on what just happened or a possible explanation, I would greatly appreciate it. Around early April of last year, I was working at a nursing home doing night shifts. I was working as a nurse's aide and it was on a brain injury unit. It was quite the experience to say the least, especially during the pandemic. Anyway, one night, we had completed all of our work and were just waiting out a couple of hours until the morning. I was three other HCAs that night and one was on a break. So it was myself and my partner. I was browsing Reddit on the company tablet and my partner was drifting in and out of sleep. It was dead silent for hours at this point. No residents had called. Out of nowhere, the TV down the hallway turns on and it starts screeching with that horrible static noise and got louder and louder. My partner jolts up and we look at each other. I said something like, it's probably John, one of the residents. And then I walked down towards the lounge area where the TV was. There was no one there. And shockingly, the remote had no batteries in it. I could only control it through the on TV buttons. Weird. We both disregarded it and laughed it off. And then she goes for break and my other partners come back. I tell her what happened and she started acting very anxious and scared pacing and asking me to repeat what happened like two or three times. A resident called and later on she calmed down and we were watching TV in the main dining hall now. Off to the corner of the dining area is a sink, one of those sensor ones, and it starts running and no one is anywhere near it. It runs for like minutes and I end up shutting off the supply. Odd, but not really weird. This is where I almost shat myself. A resident called, say Bob. I walked down the hallway to his room. As I turned, I saw him standing in the corner, face against the wall. He was naked, covered in blood and shit, and mumbling almost chanting while rocking back and forth. As I call out his name and walk towards him, he collapses on the floor. What the fuck? Some background on Bob. He's been bound to his wheelchair for the past five years. Although he has some strength to stand for a couple minutes, he definitely can't walk. Or at least I thought he couldn't. To add to that, Bob is very calm and nice, always thanking staff and stuff like that. This was a very weird and creepy experience. I later talked to the nurse about a week later, and apparently he had some type of, some type of psychotic break induced by his meds, mixed, which interacted negatively with his bipolar and brain injury. My son was born with a single heart ventricle and needed three open heart surgeries before the age of five to survive. After my son's third surgery, he developed an extremely rare complication that could only be resolved with a heart transplant. We lived in the hospital for almost three months while he was on the transplant list. 
I can honestly say those were the worst three months of my life. Seeing my son suffer and not knowing if he'd be okay. It was absolute torture. During the course of waiting, the complication was unexpectedly resolved and he no longer needed the heart transplant. Believe me when I say that it was nothing short of a miracle. No one could have predicted that he wouldn't need the transplant. Fast forward to a couple of months after we finally come home. I was going through some boxes that had my husband's old family pictures in it, including some pictures of my son's grandfather, my father-in-law. My father-in-law died 16 years before my son was born, so my son had never met him. We didn't have any pictures of him in our house at that time either. At some point, my son sat next to me at the kitchen table to see what I was doing. We come across a picture of my father-in-law and my son says, Oh hey, I know that guy. I said, you don't know him, buddy. You've never met him. He died a long time ago, before you were born. My son had a very serious expression on his face and said, Yes, I did, mommy. I know him. That's Bill. He used to sit next to me every night at the hospital and watch me. I think he was a doctor or something. My father-in-law's name was Bill. My son didn't know that. I don't know what to make of this, but I like the idea of my son's grandfather watching over him during the scariest time of our lives, which was resolved through a legitimate miracle. My son is 13 now, and I like to think that he has a guardian angel watching over him. 